Hey, what's going on? Welcome to The Doug Show. It's Doug Cunnington here. And in this episode, I am going to talk about the age site case study and the two main areas we're going to spend time on. I'm going to describe these as the thumb screws. All right. So these are things that we can do on the site to adjust, um, you know, what happens. Basically, there are two main areas and we're going to dive in. Now, if you're new to the case study, there's a few episodes out there already, and I encourage you to check them out. Usually I tried to put something in the title with like ASCS or for age site case study. And the general idea is I've purchased an age site um, and I am outsourcing almost all the activities associated with it, including finding more keywords, publishing content, and getting backlinks. Now, you may notice I've already exposed the two main thumb screws there. So the main things that you can work on for the site are the content or the backlinks. Now, with uh, both of those, you actually you know can get more traffic because it's related to what Google cares about as far as ranking your site. So doing these two things are probably, or working on these two areas are generally going to get you more traffic and hopefully boost your revenue as well. So that's that's the game we're playing here. We're trying to get more traffic on the site to potentially buy stuff from Amazon. So that is the main idea. Now, I know some folks out there are probably thinking, hey, there are so many factors for ranking. There are over 200 ranking factors that you know Google has um, at least partially described. Not all of them are known. There could be more than 200, for example. But I mean, the main the main idea is if you have high quality content that is addressing the searcher's intent, and you have some backlinks going to your site, like generally, that is going to cover almost everything that you need to do to get traffic on your site. Yes, there are more than 200 factors, but we only need to focus on these two areas. We're going to break it down a little bit deeper here and talk about content number one, and then we'll talk about links after that. Now, for content, we are going to focus on uh, like a couple of main areas. So number one, you do need to like publish content that at least a few people are searching for. And I highly recommend approaching this uh, with a keyword golden ratio. That is what I'm doing for my uh, age site in, in this case study. So I can find them on my own. By the way, someone someone asked me like, hey, Doug, why did you why did you pay human proof designs to find keyword golden ratio terms for you? Like, Doug, you created the KGR, so you should be pretty good at it. So why would you pay someone? Well, that was a, it's a good question. Um, the reason why is I'm doing a case study where I'm outsourcing everything and people I've, I've never paid anyone, um, or a service rather to find KGR terms. I have had a VA help me a few times, but I've never paid a service to do KGR keyword research for me because I could just pay my VA less to do it instead. So the, (laughs) the main thing here is, I was going to outsource it so I can get some experience with outsourcing and then share my story about it. So yes, that is the case for the whole case study. In fact, I usually do everything on my own or at least outsource it to individuals, not services. The reason why I normally outsource to individuals is because it's cheaper because you don't have to pay like middle management and there's sales and marketing costs like like anything that you're trying to buy, if you buy direct from the supplier, it's going to be cheaper than if you go through a service, a wholesaler, a retailer, and all that stuff. So typically, I I just hire people directly, and they do it because it's cheaper. But people out there, right, the audience, you out there, you're looking for something that is a little bit easier, right? You have more money than time and you don't want to work on all the admin stuff and the HR aspect of hiring and supervising people. So that is why we're outsourcing it. So it's a fair question. Why would I pay someone to do the work? Because that's the purpose of the case study, number one. And number two, 
um, it's it's pretty fast. I actually put in two orders um, with Human Proof Designs, and in I think it was like five days or so, like even across a weekend, um, I got I got all the keywords. So so anyway, once you get the keywords, then uh, there's a matter of you know prioritizing and sorting them. Um, perhaps you've you know identified some keywords on your own, so you want to put those into the mix as well. And just sort of rank and you know put put them in some sort of order. Um, it probably doesn't matter a ton, but if you have like more keywords than you have uh, sort of budget or capacity to publish, you may need to you know divide it into like you know batch one and batch two or something like that. And in that case, it could be valuable to sort them, prioritize, and so on. That's a, another discussion for another day, but I. I pulled a bunch of data from KW Finder using their keyword difficulty. And then I used Ahrefs for their keyword difficulty. Generally, I followed along with the KW Finder. It was very interesting because KW Finder uh, seems to have better data as far as keyword difficulty than Ahrefs, or at least they're providing better data. So what I found a few times is like KW Finder, the keyword difficulty would be like 50. And for Ahrefs, it would be like five. And when I looked at the competition, I looked at the keyword, I was like, this is definitely a harder keyword, not an easier one. So I generally just went with KW Finder. Seems to be a little bit more uh, true to how I interpret the SERPs. Everyone has their own opinion, and I think that's fine. But for me, I was going with KW Finder. It looked to be very solid, very um, looked to be more true when I reviewed the SERPs. All right. So once you got your uh, keywords, you can get over to your content team. And they're going to publish some stuff. So that is how you you can work on the content portion. You can add more of it, hopefully around the keyword golden ratio. If you don't want to use the keyword golden ratio, that is fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I don't care what keyword you use, <laughs> all right? Um, also, some people, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just because of the context of how some of these videos come out um, or podcasts or whatever when I talk about the keyword golden ratio. But some people seem to believe that I only publish KGR content, which is not true. It's just a good approach to publish a lot of content and get results quickly. But over time, yeah, you wanna add other content as well. So if you wanna do that on the front end, that's cool. You can do that too. Um, again, if you use the keyword golden ratio or you do not, um, it doesn't make me happier or sadder. It has uh, actually no impact on me. I don't care what keyword you use, all right? Um, you could even say the KGR doesn't work. I don't care about that either. All right. Um, okay, so that's publishing new content. That is one piece of the content side. The second piece of the content side is improving existing content. This works really well, and it's great for this particular site. My fingers are crossed, my toes are crossed that it's gonna work really well. But in this case, um, my age site has been around for a little while. I think like... Um, over a year, I think. So it's it's well beyond the sandbox period. It's getting you know 50 plus visitors uh, most days. And basically there's content on there that has not been touched in a while. It was published, it's getting some traffic. Some of those are keyword golden ratio terms and they've slowly moved up in the rankings. And like I said, the site's getting traffic. So with that said, there's definitely value in going back and seeing what is ranking for your site, whether it's an age site or it's one you've had for a little while. Like once you publish some content, you can start analyzing the data about like what traffic's coming in, what keywords it's ranking for. You could look at search console data. You can look at information from SEMrush to see what keywords your site is ranking for. You can look at uh, similar information from Ahrefs and KW Finder as well, at least the suite of tools over at KW Finder. Or this is what I did. I outsourced the activity to Content Refined. They have a 
I guess it's a service where they analyze your site, they audit it, and they take a look at sort of the low hanging fruit, maybe some pages uh, or posts or URLs or whatever on your site. Maybe the rankings were good for a little while and then it's declined over time. So that's one aspect that um, we identified on my site. And there's some others where maybe it's just, it's never ranked super awesome, but maybe it's at the bottom of page one or at the top of page two. And it looks like there's an opportunity to improve the content. Um, those are the kind of things that Content Refined will do. So they do audit it for you and give you a suggestion, and then you approve or you know make other suggestions. I took their straight up suggestions to you know I mean it looked like the reasoning was fine. I didn't have a super strong opinion, so I was like, let's do it, let's move forward. And the key distinction of using like content refined versus like doing this yourself or just kind of, you know, just guessing. Content Refine uses a sophisticated content analysis tool called Market Muse, which is very expensive. In fact, it's so expensive that really only like a big media company or a content agency could even afford it. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's very expensive. You can go uh, try and research that on your own. I don't know how much it costs currently, but you know, for me, when I checked out the demo and got the sales pitch and all that stuff, I was like, ah, you know what? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think I'm going to pay that, um, on a monthly basis. Like, even if it's hugely valuable, like I, I'm just not sure, but luckily content refined is able to do that for you. Now, if you have a look at content refined and the pricing there and you look at market muse and the pricing there and you're like, ah, you know what? It's all too expensive. Uh, no matter what, there's a, there's a way that you can maybe get a little bit more data, um, from like the search console, right? So that's data that only you have access to and it's specific for your site. So I would definitely have a look there. Additionally, there's an, there's another tool that has, similar functionality as market muse but it's way less expensive and it's a little bit uh it's sort of framed in a different way it's called a uh, page optimizer pro created by kyle roof and that is a great way to uh, kind of hit the middle ground so you could actually afford that piece of software the sort of tougher part is you do have to like do all the work yourself so at no point in time in this case study where the, there's not going to be a case where it's like, oh, you could pay a company to do it or you could do it yourself and it's going to be cheap and easy and super fast. Like either you're paying with your time and effort or you're paying with money. All right. So there's no, there's no portion here where there's like a shortcut. There's no shortcuts in this case study. So that said, you can get the information from Page Optimizer Pro and I believe I, I'm an affiliate, but I, I think I have like a discount code or something like that. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I think there's one out there. If not, just disregard what I said. But I think there's one out there. It's a very good tool. Um, you do have to get the data and results and then implement it. So the huge benefit with Content Refined is I just told them, the URL. They did analysis. They audited things. They make a suggestion and I say yes or no, or we discuss it and then they do it. In fact, I'm going to give them a login to the site as a WordPress editor so that they can go in there, edit what they need to and get out. And then it'll hopefully, right? Fingers crossed, toes crossed, um, my arms are crossed. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll see good results with increased traffic, increased uh, like rankings and all that stuff for the five pages that they're going to be updating. So quick review on the content side, you could publish more content. I highly recommend the keyword golden ratio. If you want to use something different, you can do that. That's totally cool. You can also improve the existing content. And depending on the size of your site, you may have a few options there. I would generally recommend that you you know don't try to improve every single piece of content on the site do 80 20 look at the top you know whatever 20 percent of the posts to get the most traffic or 10 percent or 25 like just don't do all of them all right just do the top pages that are ranking the best that are getting the most traffic so far and then 
you know, if you have the opportunity, if you have the budget, maybe hire content refined. If you have some budget, but maybe not en enough, look at the DIY option where you can get data from Page Optimizer Pro or a similar tool. If you're really on a budget, you can potentially, you know, pull the data from the search console and, you know, do your best to find keywords, the diamonds in the rough that, you know, you're not trying to rank for, but you're actually getting some clicks, maybe a couple of impressions, that sort of thing. And you can add, you know, content to optimize around those. As we are, as we, as I am talking about, like, the specific components of the content and the link building and throw, you know, throwing out budget, um, you know, aspects and constraints here and there. Part of this discussion is around like how you can take the ideas that I'm implementing in these two main areas, right? So content and link building and everyone's budget is going to be a little bit different. Everyone's timeline is going to be different. And I'm, I'm going through this as it makes sense for me to do it for, you know, the things I want to work on, how I want to work on it. There are many different ways to do this. So if someone wanted to focus on certain things um, that I am not, I think it, it would be perfectly valid, right? There's no, there's no like right way to do this. There are just different ways to do it. So some people may want to, you know, buy a site that is not aged, for example. Maybe your budget is less and, and you're like, you know what, in six months or a year, it, like I can let it age myself and it'll give me some time to maybe make a little money, maybe save a little money to do like bigger investments in the future. So I just want to explicitly state that before we move on to the link building portion, because I'm doing this case study, but even if you don't have the same budget, if you have a much bigger budget, like you can do things differently. If you have a much smaller budget, you can take the pieces that work for you and tailor it to, you know, your budget and maybe your skills or whatever. Maybe you have a, you know, a business partner, maybe your, your cousin or something and wants to work on it with you and they have a little money to invest in a little time, or maybe they're a writer. So, I mean, feel free to slice and dice um, like the way I'm doing this. So again, I'm not saying anyone has to do it this way. It's just the blueprint that I'm following because I kind of have uh, an idea of what I want this to look like in various ways. And part of that is to get a lot of stuff planned early let the team do stuff and then I will be vacationing <laughs> and doing stuff uh, while that is happening. And hopefully when I get back, number one, um, the work will have been done. And number two, um, maybe the business has grown while I'm out. And that'll be great uh, considering, you know, I, uh, the work that I did up front. So just wanted to mention that explicitly and you can get all the details and stuff and sort of follow along niche site project.com slash a S C S for age site case study. That's where the like uh, raw notes page are is right, right there. And I link to all the podcast episodes. I'm doing videos on YouTube as well. So some of the content aligns from like the podcast and YouTube, but not always because I'm not recording all the uh, like video stuff, uh, or if I'm making a podcast like I am now, recording a podcast as it as they call it, I'm not recording video. So if you want to get like the full package, you gotta you know you gotta check it out in both places. Now on the YouTube side, I, I haven't done any like uh, whiteboard activities yet, but there are probably going to be some crude. Um, <laughs> some crude drawings uh, where I try to illustrate certain points and that sort of thing. So it may be really worthwhile to check out the YouTube stuff if you have not, if you haven't been following along. So, okay, let's talk about link building. Now, just as a caveat, again, you, you can not build links or you can build links, whatever you want to do. I don't really care. I don't care what you do. <laughs> You can, you could use private blog networks or whatever you whatever you want to do. 
I, I don't really care. But for me, I, I believe number one, building blinks is a good idea. Like you probably shouldn't just wait for it to happen naturally. You're going to be waiting a very long time. It can happen. Um, it does happen. But if you kind of get the ball rolling, you're going to have a better trajectory, in my opinion. And most of the time when I do an analysis on someone's site and I see they've put a lot of time and effort and money into content, and then I check, take a look at their, you know, their link profile and I see that they basically have no links. That's a big sign to me that, you know, they, their site has way more potential than like, uh, than they're going to be able to achieve if they just ignore link building. Like they could probably rank well for a lot of stuff, but if you really want to rank well for some of those bigger terms, then you may have to go out there and build the links yourself, especially if it's like affiliate content, because it's a little bit harder for not necessarily harder, but it's unusual for someone to think, Hey, you know what? I am going to link to, you know, that post where basically it's just a moneymaker for someone else. They're generally not going to go and link there. So with that said, I have two main areas that I spend time with the uh, link building. One is blog commenting and I hired a VA service called OK Relax and they do the blog commenting for me. So I like to look up the blogs, the URLs and the post to to um, go comment on. So I, I search for that on my own. I give them a spreadsheet and then they go and leave comments. Now, I'm not asking them to put links into the comment itself. I'm just asking them to put helpful comments out there in the world. Now, the cool part, right, is I believe even just some of those nofollow links that come in through comments with no particular anchor text other than the name that they are using, I believe that helps. I've seen uh, increased rankings and increased traffic across multiple sites as I was testing this um, earlier in the year before I started the case study. So I've seen good results um, in more than one niche on multiple sites. And I'm like, well, that does work. Like I I didn't do anything else other than the blog commenting links and it's helpful. So I think it could be because, you know, the keyword golden ratio comes into play it doesn't take as much uh, like backlink power to rank those. So even a no follow backlink from a blog comment could be helpful, helpful enough for a term to rank. So I'm doing blog commenting in that way. And the way OK Relax works is you get, you know, a certain number of tasks per month. There's various packages. I don't remember the exact pricing and pricing a subject to change in the future. So you, uh, I think you can get like five tasks per month or 25 or 100. And the price gets cheaper per task as you get more. And currently I'm, I'm getting the 25 per month. Now you may be thinking, what constitutes a task? A task is a 30 minute block of work. So My VA does about roughly four to eight comments per task. And if I wanted to assign more tasks, right, per day, let's say I wanted to give him or her like four tasks to do, that's about a two hour block of work. Now that would be quite a few blog comments, so I don't do that. I do like one task per day. So I'm getting about five blog comments out there per day. And not all of them are going to be approved. Not all of them are going to go live. So there's a little bit of waste in the system, but it is fine. The The cost is relatively low for me um, for the benefit. And I was like, oh, well, this makes sense to move forward. By the way, if you sign up with OK Relax, using my uh, affiliate link, I get a commission, but I will share with you my blog commenting job aid that I tested and provided to my my VA and then sort of refined it, honed it over time. Um, he or she had questions and I had to you know make it more clear. So anyway, I'll give you access to that. By the way, your VA may also have questions, but you have a very good starting point. I think it's about uh, one page long or so, and it's enough information to get rolling. And then you can 
give them, you know, further instructions if you want to. A lot of times when you're working with a new person or a new VA, it's uh, totally normal for them to have questions. So the other portion is of link building is high quality guest post. So there's two services. There are two services that I've been using and I, I've been testing them out. So one is the Hoth. I've worked with them for basically since I started uh, working online and their guest posting service, I think it has improved a ton over the years. I know a few people that, you know, they commented to me that, oh, you know, hey, I don't know. I don't know about that uh, service over there at the Hoth. But then when I check with them, they maybe tested it at the very beginning or they never tested the service at all. And they just heard, you know, maybe someone in a Facebook group or some random person off the street, who knows where, where rumors get started. But, um, you know, they were just like, I don't know about using that service or any service. Um, Doug, do you know any good service to use? Well, I'm using the Hoth and uh, Logan X. I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. So this is a company that I recently was made aware of, but I saw, uh, you know, when I started doing some research for like high quality guest posting, they uh, had a testimonial from Brian Dean from Backlinko. And I was like, oh, wow. Um, So if Brian is putting his name (laughs) on there, then I was like, oh, all right, maybe, maybe I could check this out. So the couple, couple, very interesting things with Logan X is they allow you to like approve the site that the guest post is going to go on. And that is, that's key. You know, they're they're actually using the organic traffic to uh, sort of rank the, the, their packages, right? So you can get, I don't know. I can't remember that. It's like over, it's like under 5,000, 5,000 to 10,000 organic visitors and like over 10,000 maybe. I can't remember exactly, but you're able to pick the amount of organic traffic that um, the site gets. And then they give you a couple choices and then you pick the one that you want. So you get a little bit more control over the whole situation. On the Hoth, um, you don't have that approval, at least at this time when I'm recording this, you don't have that level of you know, interaction. So some people want that interaction. Some people don't, but from my experience, uh, you know, purchasing guest posts from my experience, providing a service as a you know guest poster for other people, generally, it seems like to have that control would be very valuable. However, it does make it like way more time consuming. There's obviously more effort involved to do that approval. It takes a tiny bit longer because I then have to go and analyze things and make my decision. You could, you know, just go with whatever Logan X, you know, recommends, which is actually generally what I did. I took a look, but I was like, you know what? I'll just take the defaults. Those are probably the, the best sites there, but you can go and, you know, go deeper and analyze and all that stuff. So, if you don't want to do, you know, any kind of service for guest posting, then you got to get out there. As we mentioned before, you got to get out there and put in the effort. It's going to take a while. You're going to have to send a lot of emails. You have to, you know, either write the content for the guest post or have someone else write it for you. And there's just a lot of work that you have to do for a guest post. And that is why, you know, outsourcing it is probably one of the like biggest leverage points as far as time that you can get just because there's just moving pieces. There's a lot of stuff that goes into publishing a guest post out there. Now, as far as seeing results, I have only, it's been a short time. So I haven't, I haven't seen a ton of like improvement yet, but I do know like as soon as I got the site in my possession and I had the, you know, 20 minutes or whatever to sit down and order a guest posting package from the Hoth. I got a link to the homepage with uh, what we call branded anchor text. So the branded anchor text is just like the name of the site. And that is what the link is. So the link goes to the homepage, not to any inner page or anything like that, just the straight up domain, the homepage. And I'm using you know, conservative 
Anchor Text, which is the branded Anchor Text. After that happened, rankings did go up for many terms. Um, in in fact, it, it boosted quite a bit. Um, so I can't, I don't have the sheet in front of me or I don't have the screen in front of me right here, but um, like a handful of posts went up several positions, some into the top 10, some into the top five. So I was like, okay, that obviously works well. Um, generally speaking, I'm probably going to be aiming for about half of the links to go to the homepage, somewhere between like 30 and 50%. But generally, I'll probably try and get a decent number of the early links to the homepage. And in fact, uh, like one of the orders that I have that's in progress right now as I'm recording it from Logan X, um, I got two links going to the homepage with uh, variations of the branded anchor text. And then I have one link going to an inner page that is an affiliate um it's an affiliate uh, oriented review. So at that point, right? So if I've, I've ordered four, four links, I got three of them going to the homepage, one going to an inner link, and then I have all the blog commenting going on. So those are gonna be going to the homepage as well. And slowly over time, I'm gonna be implementing like uh, blog commenting for uh, like, uh, it's called, uh, what is it? Comment love. Yes, comment love. So there's a blog commenting strategy where you use, you utilize a plugin called comment love to get links to inner pages. Handful of them are going to be do follow, which is kind of cool. However, they're still in the comment section. So I believe the you know overall power from those is going to be generally low, probably not much more than a regular blog comment. But the cool part is you do get some variations on the anchor text um, from just the comment love plugin. And by the way, you don't install comment love on your site. You just search for comment love out there in the world. There's a YouTube video on this that I created for the case study. So you could just check that out a little bit easier and you could follow along again. If you don't want to outsource that stuff, you could just watch my video and then, you know, do it all yourself if you want to. So two made thumb screws content, you can add more content. You can improve existing content. You can do it all yourself, right? If you want to, or you can hire people to do it, all of it. You can also uh, add backlinks. I think backlinks are, I think they're underrated. I think they're underrated in some some circles out there and in other circles are probably overrated, but links are helpful. You should probably spend a little time getting links or either even just promoting the site in some fashion is going to be helpful so that maybe some people will link link to it. Personally, I'm outsourcing um, the link building activities to OK Relax to do blog commenting. And I am also getting a few companies um, to do some guest posting, high quality guest posting in quick distinction. I don't know exactly how like the Hoth or Logan X I don't know. How, I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes exactly, but my impression is, and the, these may be answered in the FAQs on their sites, but my impression is they're not necessarily doing like cold outreach to a bunch of different bloggers, but rather they probably have a contact at various different blogs, right? They know how to get in touch with a blogger and then they will, you know, contact them and see if they will host a guest post for you on on uh, your behalf, right? So th- that is probably how it works. It's probably not cold outreach because that is just not an effective way to do it at scale, all right? Which is why, like, when I've looked at doing a guest posting service and tested it out and all that, generally, it kind of sucks because you have to scale outreach unless you have like a database of people to get in touch with. Again, I'm not saying I know how these companies do their service or anything like that, but that is, that's one way it could be done. I'll put it that way. It's one way that it could be done is to have just a set of contacts that you can go to and, you know, work on it that way versus sending out cold emails. It would just be so inefficient to send out that many emails and have to manage like sending emails back and forth. Now, again, one more caveat. I don't know what they do over there. 
If you have questions about the case study or questions for me uh, just in general, there is a, an email address, feedback at doug.show. You can just send an email there. I uh, read them all. I may not be able to reply back to all of them, but I do read them all. And that is where I get uh, show ideas and stuff. So if you have a question, sometimes um, I can answer it quickly, but other times, you know, maybe it it becomes like a podcast series or something like that. I do give you a shout out most often. Um, You know, I just say your first name. I don't, uh, you know, read out your social security number or anything like that, but you can shoot me an email. If you want to leave a voicemail, there's a number out there as well. So it's in the show notes and description. So just have a look there if you want to leave a voicemail. Again, you could ask questions about the case study. You could ask more general questions if you want to. So that is uh, that is very helpful, especially because there's certain things that I, I know folks are interested about in the case study, but there's some things that I don't necessarily think of. And it's really good to have, you know, a set of questions that I know people want to know more information about. Before I sign off today, I was going to just mention a YouTube thing that I tested out um, like over the last week or so. Now, I've gone uh, like up and down with a number of videos I publish on on YouTube. There was a stretch where I was trying to publish like three times a week and maybe do a live stream as well. And I, I mean, I put a ton of time into YouTube. Luckily, I've slowly improved, but some of those early videos were like totally a nightmare. You should check them out. I think they're all still like public out there. So you could just go way back in the archive and, and see some of those early videos. And um like one thing I realized is people are interested in the success stories quite a bit. People love the success stories. Some of the most viewed videos that I have out there. And, you know, me personally, I I like hearing those kind of stories and I liked it when I was getting started. It was very inspiring and, you know, it helps people identify with certain individuals like, Hey, I'm sort of like them. If they could do it, I could do it. That kind of thing. I think that's why they're so powerful. But What I also realized is as I'm publishing content on YouTube and there's so much of it, there's so many videos, like it just kind of gets buried in the archive and people that are, maybe they've been a fan and a subscriber and they've watched several of my videos, maybe dozens of my videos on the channel over the past year. They maybe don't watch all of them. Number one, I can't blame anyone for that. And maybe they haven't gone back deep into the archive. So I had the idea to, you know, republish some content, which I've done in the past, you know, Um, as my subscriber base grows, there are more people that haven't seen the early stuff because it's not publicized very effectively um, the way YouTube does it. There's a lot of suggested videos, but um, just in a general sense, people aren't notified about older videos. They're only notified about, new videos that are recently published. So with that said, I was like, well, I got all this great content in the archive. In fact, some of them are fantastic interviews that I know are really good. And in fact, some of them are like interviews with people plus updates in the future as they've grown. And I was like, you know, what will be cool is to just like put those together into one long video and gosh, what would happen if I broke all the normal, like standard conventions that you would get for advice on YouTube? So typically, right, if you if you research it, it may vary just a little bit, but if you look for the quote, maybe like a ideal length of a YouTube video, it's probably gonna be somewhere between five and 15 minutes, right? So it could vary a little bit, but it's kind of in that range 10 minutes is probably like a really good sweet spot. And, you know, if you can get people to watch 50% or more of your video, that's really good. So if you use that sort of like average and calculate it out, you got a 10 minute video. If you can get people to watch like five to seven and a half minutes or so, like that's pretty good. So I was thinking, all right, what if I do this long ass video that's maybe like three hours long it's already 
content that is out there and available, but I'm just going to like reframe it, like repackage it and re-edit it and just put out a big video, put a new thumbnail out there and just see what happens. So that's what I did last week. I published a three hour video that had five different interviews with three different people. It is very long, again, breaking all the conventions that normally you would get, um, or the advice that you would get from people based on like common knowledge. So anyway, it's been pretty cool because generally it looks like about the same number of people have watched the video, right? So the number of views is about average for a success story that I would publish. So a few hundred, less than a thousand, few hundred people watched it. Great. Um, the amount of view time though is like, more than double, all right? So when you look at the percentage of watch time, it's actually very low, it's under 10%. But the average watch time is like 17 minutes. So it's like 10 minutes longer than the the stat that I mentioned before if you just aim for the averages. Now, the weird thing, you know, with the averages and um, like the audience and that sort of thing is like, there are some people that watch the full three hours, right? There, there are a few people that watch the whole thing. Even if they've already seen it before, they will watch the whole thing. It's kind of crazy. And then there's some people who are going to watch like two minutes here and then they're just going to bounce. They're not even going to pay attention. They may not even make it through the intro. So there's a lot of people that drop off, but I mean, I put it in the title and I put it on the thumbnail that it's like a three hour long set of success stories. So it's like, if people land there, like they know what they're getting into. So again, very interesting, but from a, like a YouTube perspective, like what does YouTube want? They want people on the platform watching content. So if I can get a handful of people that are going to be glued to it for, you know, three hours, even if it's only a few, like that's good. And then when I look at my watch time for that video, it like absolutely blows away many of the other videos that I've published. Now, I'm sure, you know, there's some there's some other, you know, behind the scenes factors. Like, I don't know if those viewers are like people that click on ads or if they have YouTube Red or whatever, but it's been interesting to just try something completely different and see where it lands. And just in a general sense, I'm like, oh, this could work. I have, uh, you know, several hundred videos on YouTube. What if I like re-edited and like created a different mix um, and just put it all in one video? Now, because in, in my head, right, I'm thinking, oh, I could create a playlist here and then have a playlist that people can watch that has the videos there, right? Like, isn't that effectively the same thing? I don't know. I mean, generally, yeah, but for whatever reason, you know, me publishing that video as a new video and having like some new excitement and new, you know, new people watching it, like it's, it's effective. So look out for more of those. And that's sort of the behind the scenes of what's going on on YouTube. And I'm just like, Hey, let me try this completely counter, uh, counterintuitive idea that a lot of people would probably say is a bad idea. It's pretty easy to do too. So anyway, that's all for today. Again, if you have any questions or anything on the age site case study, feel free to shoot me an email or leave me a voicemail. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to The Doug Show. I really do appreciate it. I mean, I'm just sitting here on my computer recording stuff and uh, you're listening to it and I think that's awesome. If you enjoy the show and you know someone who maybe would be interested in it, please let them know. I think it would be fantastic if you help spread the word. If you are not signed up for the Niche Site Project email list, well, you're in luck. All you have to do is go to nichesiteproject.com, click the green button, enter your name and email address, and I'll send you a bunch of cool stuff about affiliate marketing, productivity, including all my templates. If you happen to not be subscribed to this podcast, please do subscribe and don't forget, 
I welcome your questions. So you could send uh, your emails to feedback at doug.show. I got that really cool domain, doug.show, that's it. So feedback at doug.show. Or I'm going to leave my voicemail number in the show notes. So all you have to do is give me a buzz, leave a voicemail, and then I'll potentially put you on the air. So looking forward to it, and we'll catch you next time.